It is August 16th, and a few days ago I started my August TBR Spin book. So TBR Spin is a super fun booktube game or reading challenge that was started by Jill at the Book Bully and Sarah at Freshly Read Books, based on two previous TBR games, which were the Booktube Spin, started by Rick McDonnell, and TBR Tackle, started by Kieran at Katie Books. At the beginning of the year, we picked 12 books off of our TBR any books that we wanted to read throughout the year, and each month Jill or Sarah spin a wheel with prompts on it. Whatever prompt the wheel lands on helps us pick a book. Sometimes there's a guest host on, sometimes the wheel tells us to swap out a book, but a lot of times it's a more straightforward prompt that just inspire us to look at our stack of 12 and pick them out. In January we had 12 books, in February we had 11 books, and so on and so forth. So in August we had five books and my August TBR pick was As You Wish, Inconceivable Tales from the Making of the Princess Bride by Carrie Elwes with John Layden. This is just what it sounds like on the tin. It is a memoir or remembrance of Making of the Princess Bride by Carrie Elwes who starred in that movie. It starts from the minute that he heard about the film being created and that he was up for the role and presumably goes until the film wraps. This one worked out perfectly to read in August because it is also Garb August, which is Criminali's trashy book reading readathon, and this fits perfectly into that. One of the ways that Criminali describes trashy books is something that piggybacks or capitalizes on an existing fad or trend, and that's exactly what this book is. Carrie Elwes, many years after making The Princess Bride and even after the 20th anniversary, made this book in 2014. I'm sure it was a story that he wanted to tell. I'm sure that it was a memoir that he had inside of him, but I'm sure it was also capitalizing on the huge hype around this movie, especially through nostalgia for people like me who watched it continuously as a little child. I actually got really far in this book already. I'm three-fourths of the way through. I only have about I don't know, maybe a hundred pages left. I am enjoying it. I definitely like it. It's interesting to read about. It makes me want to watch the movie, and one of the things that I'm going to do for this video is watch the movie, because I haven't seen the movie in a long time. The Princess Bride was for a long time in my top three favorite films of all time, and it only got booted out about ten years ago. This was a film that I watched constantly when I was a kid. I remember renting it over and over and over again, and watching it three or four times in the days that we had the VHS for rent. I just remember loving it so much, eventually had my own copy, watched it over and over again, watched it well into my adulthood many times a year, but I haven't seen it in many years now, so I'm excited to re-watch it again. And just for your information, my current top three favorite films of all time will always be, or are always, The Philadelphia Story starring Carrie Grant, another Carrie, and Katherine Hepburn. I adore that film. I love the history of it. So interesting. Ace Ventura, which I saw when I was young and just fell in love with and I think it's hilarious to this day. And the movie that knocked the Princess Bride out of its spot is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by Clint Eastwood. So I love that film a lot and I love everything about it. And then I would say probably, well I have to watch it, but I would say that probably The Princess Bride is in the fourth spot still. I have also read The Princess Bride the book by William Goldman and I kind of want to reread this too, so we'll see if I end up reading this in this video and or watching the movie. I remember loving the film so much. I remember being so excited to find out that it was a book. And I remember picking up the book and it being in some ways extremely different than the film and in some ways very similar to the film. And I remember enjoying the book but not being as enamored of it as I was in the movie. Which I think is probably an impossibility because I loved that movie so much when I was a kid and watched it so much in my lifetime. I would be interested to pick the novel up again. It's under 300 pages. I'm sure it's easy to read. I think it's really interesting that in As You Wish, 
one of the things that Carrie Elwes talks about and other people who are quoted in the book talk about is how much they loved this novel and how much this novel meant to them and how their parents had given them this novel to read. That was what sparked their interest in being in the movie of The Princess Bride. And I feel like William Goldman is just one of those people who, although he's known for his screenwriting, his novels have completely fallen by the wayside, and I think that that's really interesting. I think Brian from Bookish might have mentioned something, or maybe it was even Criminali, that mentioned something about William Goldman and how he had been a huge literary figure at one point, and then no one ever talks about him anymore. So I would be interested to go back and read this to jog my memory and to look at the writing with like maybe a more critical eye now that I'm older. As You Wish, the memoir is told in an interesting way. It's told in very linear format of Carrie learning about the role, getting the role, auditioning, all that stuff. But then there are interjections from other people who were interviewed for the book. Interviews with other stars and with the director Rob Reiner and the producers with William Goldman. There are like little parts where other actors, other people are kind of interjecting their thoughts. I don't know if I love that necessarily um, because it does make it a little bit like hard to read but it does make it a very quick read because this is an already short book and I think only like under 250 pages then it's even shorter and there are also color photos and black and white photos in the middle. Another reason why I think this book reads extremely quickly, I read the first like 125 pages in a couple of hours the first day, is that it is extremely rudimentarily written. I don't think Carrie Elwes is like the best writer and hopefully Joe Layden helped him out with the writing, but it's definitely written in a very conversational way that is not good writing necessarily. Totally easy to read, totally fun, but not mentally taxing for sure. By all accounts, it seems like everyone filming this movie had an amazing time, loved their experience, loved working with each other, were very much enamored of the entire process. This book is also written in a way that there's like nothing negative to say, there's no drama, there's no nuance to how Carrie felt about the movie and about the people working on it. Not that I'm looking for drama, I don't like drama, but a book gets a little bit boring and repetitive when the only thing to be said is like, they were so great, they were so wonderful to work with, it was so nice to work with them, they were so nice, it was all so nice, everybody was so nice, everybody was so patient, everybody was so involved, everybody was so um, happy to be there, you know? So there's definitely a little bit of that that feels like glad handing, even if it was absolutely 100% true. I think this book probably could have even been shorter than it actually was. There's some passages that the same things are repeated quite often, especially about how nice people were, how generous Rob was, how kind Andre the Giant was, you know, which you want to hear about, you want to know, and I definitely would rather hear that than that everybody hated each other, that it was a total beast to make, that it was awful, because I do have such a fond place in my heart for the movie. I wouldn't want to know if there had been a lot of drama. I wouldn't want to know if it was not a fun time for people. So I'm happy that it is turning out this way, but it doesn't make for like a amazing read. So I'm going to read the last hundred pages or so of this and I will come back and update you on my final thoughts on the book and then at the beginning of September we will see Jill's video to pick our next book. If you've ever read any William Goldman book, actually. I would really like to know what your experience was. If you've read The Princess Bride, I would love to hear about your thoughts on it. And if you've watched the movie, I would love to hear your thoughts on that as well. I think a lot of people probably have fond reminiscences that they can leave in the comments below.
it is the end, nearing the end of August, and I did finish As You Wish. Just a few days after the last time I talked to you, it's been a few days since then. I definitely feel similarly to kind of what I was saying. I think this was like a very simple book. It was a very uncomplicated book. It was very undramatic. It was a little bit repetitive because Carrie Elvis had a great time. Everybody had a great time making this movie. It was a wonderful experience and it was amazing. That being said, I enjoyed reading some of the stories. I was able to tell some of the stories to my husband and, you know, explain some funny things that happened, which was fun. Just gain a little bit more insight into the making of this movie that I love so much. This book definitely did make me cry in the end. I cried like the last 10 pages because Carrie Elwes did have such a special experience and the people involved in the movie did have such a special experience, but Carrie really talks about how no matter how much they felt for the movie, they didn't anticipate how much people would love the movie and how it would become something of its own and such a wonderful thing for so many people. And I just have so many fond memories of watching it when I was little and renting the VHS, wearing it out, watching it a million times, wanting to watch it over and over again, and it brings so much joy into my life and so I could really identify with Carrie's heartfelt sentiment that he was really glad that it brought so much joy into other people's lives and so many people's lives and it took on a life of its own and became a wonderful thing. So I did finish As You Wish and I did enjoy it. I'm glad I read it. It is September 1st. It's time to watch the new prompt and I have not watched The Princess Bride. I haven't watched it. I have no attention span for watching movies these days. I can watch booktube and I can read books and I can listen to books but like watching movies feels like such a ridiculous commitment that I have not been doing it and I am going to continue not doing it unfortunately. So maybe there's a video in there of me watching movies that I have recently read books of. I've recently read so many books that were made into movies or were about movies so so I read As You Wish by Carrie Elwes for this video. I also recently just read The Jaws Log, which is a very similar book, kind of a memoir of the making of Jaws, which was really cool. And it was interesting to read both of these two books very close together. I recently read the Area X trilogy or whatever that's called, the Southern Reach trilogy, and then I watched Annihilation, so there's definitely could be some discussion there. I recently read The Stepford Wives, and I would definitely love to see the original film of that. I've never seen it. Secret of Nim I read earlier this month that I could watch the movie of. So if that's something that would interest you to kind of hear me talk about the movies versus the books, let me know in the comments below. I would like to watch some of those movies. I definitely want to watch Jaws after reading the Jaws log, but I don't want to do it until I stop swimming for the year. So probably another month or two, because uh, swimming is the best in New Jersey in September, but I'm not strong enough to watch Jaws and then swim in the ocean. Um, so let's talk about the new September TBR spin. Let's talk about the books that I still have left. So on my spin list, I still have Florida by Lauren Groff. I've put that on several other lists now too, so I really need to get to that one before the end of the year. That was already picked in a spin and it was like an extra prompt, so I do want to do an extra TBR spin video for that. Maybe I will do a video for that, but I'll save it for vlogmas and I will put that up as one of my like extra vlogmas videos. As far as this month I still have Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown, The Bean Trees by Bar Barbara Kingsolver, Severance by Ling Ma, and The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi by Shannon Shakaborty. Let's watch Jill from the Book Billies video and find out what our prompt for this month is. Ooh, okay, so our spin was a book about a real person, people from history. A book about real person or people from history. A book about a real 
person or people from history. Let me watch the rest of the video and think about this for a second. So I could read Ruby Fruit Jungle because this is a autofiction, I think, based on the life of Rita Marie Brown and her experience as a young lesbian or bisexual, I'm not sure. I have been putting off reading this. Everybody loves it. It's supposed to be amazing. It's absolutely a queer classic. I think the book that I'm actually going to pick is The Road from Kurain by Jill Kerr Conway, a woman's exquisitely clear-sighted memoir of growing up Australian. This is a nonfiction that my mom gave me a few years ago. She read it. She really enjoyed it. It comes in at 238 pages, so it definitely fits into Shorty September, so reading it in September is good. It also works for Straya September, which is also going on this month, so I would like to read some Australian literature. I only have one nonfiction and one fiction. I'm hoping to read them both in September, so I think this would be a good one to read also for the TBR spin. Straya September is put on by Scott at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, and Shorty September is put on by Past Story Time. So I will leave both those channels linked down below, as well as Jill from The Book Bully and Sarah from Freshly Read Books, who will be doing next month's prompt. I'm going to be reading this one for September for the TBR spin, which is interesting because I've read more nonfiction in this TBR game, yearly TBR game, I think, than any other, which I like. I'm, I'm enjoying that. I'm having fun with it. But that does mean that I have to take one of these books off of my list. I mean, I'm inclined to take this one off, but I really want to get to this one, and this is the one I've been putting off. I also feel like I need to leave The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi on because I don't think I'll get to that unless I'm forced to. So we're gonna leave these two. So that leaves me with Severance by Ling Ma and Barbara King Zolver's The Bean Trees. These two books that I'm leaving on my spin are a little bit long and Severance I think is like over 300 pages. Maybe I should take this one off. Yes, we're gonna do that. So my three books left are these. I vlog all my TBR spins, so you can always see a playlist linked below of all those. And you can see it next month when I read this at the end of September, and I will come back at the end of that vlog and pick my book for October. So let me know if you're participating in the TBR spin. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do that video on books versus movies that I've read recently. Thanks so much for joining me today. <laughs> I hope you have a good one. Bye.